It's wrong to go flipping people off, right? What about in places where they don't use the middle finger to mean that? Is what's right and wrong just depend on what culture you're in? Let's consider. I can't get it off my Hello philosophers, I'm Chico. Welcome to the Philosopher Show where we consider the greatest questions of human history. I started off this episode asking a question about the middle finger, and it's a weird question because if you think about it, just having that middle finger out in the first place, why is that wrong, right? Why? What makes that a bad thing to do? I remember when I was in second grade, I think, I, I uh, was on the bus, and I think I was pretending, this is weird, I was pretending my, my hand was a little spider, and my middle finger was the head of the spider climbing up the wall, and I remember uh, one of the kids told the bus driver on me, Chico's putting the middle finger up. And I'm like, I, I know I'm not. I was, and I knew I was. I was like, no, I'm not. What does that mean? <laughs> I had no idea what that meant. I didn't know if that was a bad thing to do, right? And then um, years later, when I didn't know what it was a bad thing to do, I remember in eighth grade, uh, I was sitting with uh, me and this kid, Scott Schultz. And then I can't remember what the other kid's name was. Uh, I can't remember who the other kid was, I should say. We were on this scavenger hunt at the end of the year, and we were sitting in the back of this this mom's uh, station wagon. And it, I, didn't, I didn't know who the mom was, but the the la, the back seat faced rear, you know. And we, we, were, uh, we were ducking down, and we were putting our hands up and just you know, <laughs> so dumb and we were cracking up we thought it was so funny until uh, you could just imagine like a little finger coming until uh this person pulled us pulled over the mom and told her what we were doing and we were aghast right we were shocked and i, I just didn't think anybody would do that you know so uh it, but it's a weird thing to be upset about right we put our, our middle but and, and yet think about if somebody put that middle finger in your face you'd be upset right um it's weird because it's only wrong because of the place that you're in, right? And, and and it seems like such a totally arbitrary thing to to choose to be a wrong thing. Here's an example that might help you see that. Uh, there's a famous story now. Uh, George Bush Sr. is in Australia uh, in the back of his limo driving through. There are protesters. He wants to kind of be, you know... The, the nice guy here and he wants to give them the peace sign right he, he wants to say peace but apparently in australia that's like the middle finger right the two fingers i don't know exactly why um i have guesses but i don't want to say them on air uh, but he, yeah he, he threw out the peace. and when we were in the 90s hip-hop and r&b peace you know peace and i'm out that's the way we, we used to throw deuces all the time uh, that's what that is, you know, that, that's and so it seems so weird that that would be something wrong. And yet it seems like him going out there. I'm, I'm not saying he because he had no idea. Right. He, he didn't mean to do that. But it definitely if you knew, like and you started throwing that out around, it seems like you would be offending people and you knew you were offending people. You should probably not do that. Right. It seems like the wrong thing to do. But only in Australia, because only there is it seem like somebody would take offense to that. So it might seem like. The right thing to do changes based on where you're at. That is an idea called cultural relativism. Cultural relativism is this idea where uh, a thing is good if and only if the society approves of it. Right? That's what we mean by uh, morally good. Let me uh, also plug this book one more time. And I forgot the guy's name once again, but but check in the link. Henry Gan Gensler? Gensler? Slippy, Slappy, Swinson, Swanson, Samsonite. I don't know. Something. Uh, check, check in the uh, in the description. Uh, he wrote this uh, contemporary, what was it? Ethics, a contemporary introduction. I like this this uh, series, a contemporary introduction. I think it's, uh, where do I have one? Uh, Rutledge? I think Rutledge does it. I, I have right now. Uh, the epistemology one uh, on my desk by Robert Audi, who is a big name. Uh, but this one, it's interesting because Robert Audi's is, is a little more complex. I read the psychology one and it's that's tough. But this ethics one is perfect for, for beginning students. In any case, he breaks it down like this. And, and I really appreciated it for uh, for those first year students. Um, when you're a cultural relativist, what you mean by good is just society approves of and you can even uh 
take that word good and say, whenever somebody is using this word good, we, we translate it to say X is good just means society approves of X. So for example, if we thought feeding the hungry is good, all we mean by that statement, feeding the hungry is good, is that wherever you live, right? I live in Orange County, or in Orange County, it is acceptable or is societally approved to feed the hungry, feed the homeless. Whereas uh, maybe in other societies, it wouldn't be. The, here, and he makes this point um, that I thought was interesting. Um, the word wrong uh, would be a relative term in much like, oh, he makes the, this analogy, which is what I like, much like the, the uh, um, term left. If I were to say uh, Bob is to the left of, that seems like a weird thing to say, right? Bob is to the left of. You want to say to the left of what, right? The same thing with this word wrong. Uh, stealing is wrong. For for cultural relativists, they're going to say wrong for what or wrong where, you know, that it won't make any sense. In just in the, in the same way as saying to the left of won't make any sense uh, unless we have some kind of context. So cultural relativists have a very specific perspective of uh, of what is right and wrong uh, as it pertains to a, a society. I'm here to ex explaining it. I'm going to argue for it here. I, I'm not a cultural relativist. I'm going to do my best to make it uh, make sense. And then uh, in the next one, I, I'll do uh, objections to it. Um, as a philosopher, you know, you you got to make sure, even if you disagree with whatever it is, that you're presenting it the best that you can. Otherwise, you know, you're not really doing philosophy. You know, you're doing sophistry. So I am, uh, yeah, I'll try to present it the best I can. If you're looking at this uh, George Bush thing and you're saying, yeah, but that's etiquette, right? Uh, obviously, you know, it's it's much like language. If I were to say, you know, it, it, in the United States, uh, a bad word and uh, say poopies, right? I say poopies, uh, and that's a bad word in the United States. And then I went to Spain and said poopies, right? Then it might mean something different there, right? Because it's a different language. So, of course, you know, things like etiquette, rules like that are going to be different between societies. That doesn't mean right and wrong is going to be different in societies. Uh, here's another uh, possible scenario that might help uh, to, to understand why someone would look at this, uh, see things this way. About my son was my oldest son was five years old when we took a trip to Spain. My my wife is a uh, uh, flamenco dancer, and uh, she she wanted to go uh, to some class there, and uh, she's she's really good. Uh, she doesn't watch these shows, so I'm I could brag on her, and she won't she won't get embarrassed at all. But she's outstanding. Um, she doesn't watch it, but I go on her account and I play, it so I get one more view. You know, I need those views, man. Get your friends in on this. Uh, anyway, uh, so we were in Spain, and I'd heard that there were topless beaches in Europe. I'd heard. i never seen, and I never planned to see, but we went one day. so hot. We were in August. It's so hot in August. And uh, we went to Jerez de la Frontera, and I believe Cadiz is, is where we went uh, to the beach. And we got there, and it was topless beaches. And I remember, like, whoa, this is messed up, man. You know, like, you should be putting those things away, right? Um, you should be, you know, have some modesty, people. And and I thought, like, you know, I mean, there's, there's such a thing as, you know, uh, what kind of clothes you wear in a different place. But this is, like, you're just letting them hang out, you know? Um, and then, I, I don't know, I started to think a little bit more about it. And I live in San Clemente, right? And, and in San Clemente, uh, it, it, we're on the beach and when we cruise around I, I can't tell you you know it's it's rare for me to wear shoes at all it's rare for me to wear a shirt I, i'll cruise around without a shirt and no big deal just one town over in san juan capistrano if you go into like a, a restaurant or uh, even like a store without a shirt on they look at you like you're a freak and it's that you see the shock like like what is happening here and you want to be well, like, when you guys go to the beach, you don't wear a shirt, right? What's the difference here? Like, it's like I'm at the beach, you know, but I'm just right here. And yet being in that different uh, place, it seems like all of a sudden it just changes your mindset and it gives you that shock, right? Um, the Here's another weird 
uh, twist on this is that in I, I don't know what it's like where you live at, but in San Clemente, the female swim attire can be uh, negligible. <laughs> it can be very small, and the ladies have these these bikinis where. Uh, the, the, you know, they used to call them butt floss, right? Where the nalgas are just hanging out, you know, that not covering anything um, back there. And it seems that that seems almost, you know, it, you could see how people would be feel shocked about that kind of a stuff. But in St. Clemente, it seems normal. But think about this. Those kinds of, uh, of swimwear are really nothing more than a typical woman's underwear. Right, it's some a lot of women don't uh, will wear more underwear than just that. But if you saw those same women at the beach in their underwear, now all of a sudden that would be shocking. You'd feel this. Oh, put that away. You know what are you doing? Like why? How could you be out here in, in your you know in your naughty clothes? Um, and so it's so weird. The same shapes, the same cuts. You know the same stuff exposed, and yet just because we know one is for sleeping or or for you know protecting stuff and the other one is specifically for the beach you know then all of a sudden it seems like it's okay on the second on the second one that seems weird right and you could see now hopefully how the topless beaches uh in europe people people weren't sitting around there looking like dang what's going on you know people there were just it was it was like it would be here for the short the, the tiny bikinis you know um the dudes have the tiny bikinis there too. I don't know. That is whew, the banana hammocks. Uh, that is not comfortable. And I should say, if you are thinking about this and you, you you know you're like, I need to go to Europe, right? Topless. Let me tell you, it's top, everybody's topless, right? So I got there, and first of all, I'm a married man, so I'm not looking at that in the first place, right? I, I have no interest in that kind of stuff. And my wife, she was she kept covered. Don't worry. Uh, but second of all. You know, I could see how as a young man, you might feel, or a young person in general, right? You might feel like that's an exciting thing, but uh, you get there and grandmas, you know, they've, they've got them out and uh, smaller people, right? It, oh, oh, you know, you just, you look, I, I can't, I had to keep my eyes up like this the whole time. Uh, not because I was tempted by the fruit of another, but because I was, you know, like, oh, I'm not comfortable in this. It's kind of like when you're, I don't know, ladies, how it is, but for a gentleman, when you're in the urinals, you know, you got to keep your eyes at this level, right? You're not looking down, nice watch, buddy, you know, like that's, that's, this is, this is the acceptable, right? That's the way I was the whole time. It seems weird, right? That, 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 uh, you know, in the first place that, uh, that, that would strike me so heavily, but in the second place of people walking around like it's nothing, like it's no big deal. Okay, you might think we're talking etiquette, we're talking, you know, clothing. Of course, those things change within societies, but the but the big ones, those things don't change. Doesn't matter, uh, you know, what you say, where you're at, it is wrong, let's say, for example, to own slaves. That is a difficult uh, uh, entry into a, a, an uncomfortable topic, but here, here's what, here goes. Possibly a cultural relativist could argue like so. Imagine you are a white slave owner in, uh, in the middle of the plantation days. In fact, let's say that you were born into a slave owning family. You all of a sudden inherit slaves um, and Everyone around you owns slaves. You're in the middle of the deep south the United States, and um, you have to figure out what do I do? Do I release my slaves into freedom? Uh, release them into what? They can't get jobs. They're probably going to get recaptured again. They might be beaten, all kinds of bad things. Uh, should you just release these people? Um, should you uh, possibly? remain a slave owner and just treat them well and educate and all those kinds of things, what should you do? Uh, I, I don't like that uh, <laughs> scenario because it's uncomfortable for me. I don't, I don't know. Um, and please, if, if you, especially if you are descendant of, of a slave, um, please don't, don't, I'm not trying to be cavalier here and throwing that out. Uh, I, uh, I can only imagine you know, how, how that affects you, how that affects all your ancestors. Insane, right? Horrible, horrific. Um, I don't, I don't know, but I mean, even, even like one of the worst things I can think of 
it, it seems like at least you can you can see why it would be plausible for somebody to hold in some scenarios it would be a good thing to do uh, i'm not saying it is a good thing but um uh, I, I could see people making the argument in other words and yeah it, it's it's um it, it might be wrong you know you might say that owning slaves is wrong no matter what and even if you release them and there's no way for them to to you know uh to get food or no way for them to uh um avoid recapture you should not own slaves um that's a that's an idea for example a philosopher named Immanuel Kant might say you know it's not up to you what happens to them afterwards but it is up to you whether you own those slaves or not so i'm not saying that this is proving cultural relativism uh i'm, I'm just trying to make it as plausible as i can right as as a uh, as a philosopher as i said before i believe i'm not a cultural relativist uh but i'm going to try to make it as plausible as possible um yeah so let me know um what you think about those scenarios is it the case that these things are wrong just purely based on the culture that you're in? All right, some of them seem obvious, like the middle finger. Some of them seem a little less obvious, like like the slave owner. Um, uh, also, please like, comment, subscribe, and uh, hit up your friends so they can join the conversation. And that's all I got for today. Adios. Mm -hmm.